Yes, I am screen recording this time. Hello everyone, I have filmed this video quite a few times already because for some reason I do not understand how to press the screen record button. So here I am on the third attempt. So this is our first video of the A-level specification for OCRPE. In this first video we are going to look at the joints, the movements at those joints and the muscles producing those movements. So yeah, the location and names of joints, location and names of the muscles and the movements able at if each joint type. Here is the location of the joints. I've numbered them so you know where I'm going. The first location is the shoulder joint. It's a ball and socket joint. Second is the elbow joint, which is the hinge joint. Third is the knee joint, which is also a hinge joint. The fourth will be the hip joint, which is a ball and socket joint. Fifth is the wrist joint, which is a condyloid joint. And the sixth is the ankle joint, which is also known in the A-level specification as a hinge joint, where technically it's not, but that's what we're going to be going with. So firstly is the shoulder. The shoulder is in fact the most mobile joint in the human body, as it can do in 10 different movements, and I've only enabled them to nine, so whatever. So the first one is flexion, and that is paired with extension. So the flexion is, agoni the agonist is the anterior deltoid, and the antagonist is the posterior deltoid. And all shoulder movements are fixated by the trapezius. The second pairing is the horizontal flexion and horizontal extension. Yeah, so let me give you a sporting example of that. So imagine you're hitting a forearm in tennis. You know, the execution, the hitting through the ball, that is horizontal flexion. You're moving your hand horizontally to in, out in front of your body to connect with that ball. And horizontal extension as well is the preparation phase. You're moving your arm back horizontally, getting the range of movement ready to hit the ball. So it's the agonist of horizontal flexion is the pectoralis major, and the antagonist is the anterior deltoid. And that's just switched around for the you know, horizontal extension. The next pairing is abduction and adduction. So basically, the best example you can use is a star jump. I've used it, in, I, used, well, I used it in all my papers when this question came up, and I always got full marks and full credit for this. So, abduction, imagine the outward phase of a star jump. You know, the, you're moving your arms up and out. That is, in theory, abduction. The agonist is the medial deltoid, and the antagonist is the latissimus dorsi. The adduction, moving the arms back in towards the midline of your body, that is the agonist of the latissimus dorsi, and the antagonist is the medial deltoid. So yeah, a fairly simple one, just use the star jump as the example. The next pair is medial and lateral rotation. Imagine you've got a key, and you put the key in a door, and you have to lock the door by twisting the key to the left. That is medial rotation. The best sporting example I can give you for uh, this, it, well, medial rotation, is getting top spin in table tennis. Yeah. So imagine table tennis, you go and you do that movement to hit the table tennis. Yeah. To hit it over the ball to get the top spin. That is medial rotation. The agonist is the pectoralis major and the antagonist is the teres minor. Opposite the lateral rotation, imagine you've put the key in the door and you're now going to unlock it by turning your wrist out rightwards. That is lateral rotation. An example of that is getting top spin with a backhand on the table tennis bat. You are then hitting up and over the ball, twisting your wrist out to the right. That is lateral rotation. And the next two, they never ask about, but theory, you do have to learn them. Circumduction and rotation. Pretty much the same movement. But all the muscles in the, around the shoulder involved, as both of the agonist and the antagonist. And the sporting example I will give here is the arm action in butterfly. But don't worry about it. They don't ask about it. Don't hold me to that. Um, <laughs> moving on to the elbow joint. This is a hinge joint. The good thing about hinge joints is there's only two, you know, movements produced. That's it. Just two. The first one, flexion. So the best example I can give you of this is a bicep curl. The agonist is the bicep brachii and the antagonist is the tricep brachii. Other one, extension. Let me give you a sports example. Uh, the execution of a netball pass for those netballers. Do you understand that? Basically, you move your, the ball from in your chest and you push the ball out. You've extended the elbow. That is agonist. The agonist there is the tricep brachii, the antagonist, the bicep brachii. Exactly. So the fixator for both these movements is the anterior deltoid in the shoulder. Moving on, we move on to the wrist joint. And it is stated that this is a condyloid joint, but you only need to know about wrist flexion and wrist extension here. It's very simple, you know, the agonist for the wrist flexion is the wrist flexors and the antagonist is the wrist extensors. Wrist extension, agonist, wrist extensors, antagonist, wrist flexors. And these are all, you know, um, fixated by the anterior downward in the shoulder once again. The best sporting example I can think of for wrist flexion is a serve in tennis. 
what do you do? You get up, you throw the ball in the air, you hit over the ball. And you, you know, flex the wrist to get over the ball and get the angle to go down and into the box in the opposite side of the court. It's the extension. Just imagine you are going for a lob, a backhand lob in tennis. What do you do? You move your wrist under the ball and you flick up to get the ball up in the air and over the opponent. They're the two best examples I could ever come up with for that. Moving forward to the hip joint. It is a ball and socket joint, but it is actually less mobile than the shoulders ball and socket joint. Abduction and adduction. Again, think about the star jump. What happens? Your leg goes up and out for abduction, and the leg comes back in, down and in for adduction. So, abduction, the agonist is the gluteus medius, and the antagonist... So, basically, the adductor group, but you only need to state once. You can either write adductor longus, adductor magnus, or adductor brevis. Same for adduction. The agonist will be the adductor longus, adductor magnus, or adductor brevis. And the antagonist will be the gluteus medius. And remember, guys, all the, fixate, no, the fixating muscle for all the hip movement is the rectus abdominis. Moving forward, um, hip, ex, hip flexion. Think about a 100 meter hurdles. Your leading leg will lift up and forward to go over the hurdle. That is hip flexion. So the agonist there is the ellipsoas, and the antagonist is the gluteus maximus. But extension, you can do the exact same sporting example. Think about the leg behind the leading leg, you know, the following leg. What does that do? It goes back. It goes back to get over the hurdle. That's, that's hip extension. So the gluteus maximus is the agonist, and the antagonist is the ellipsoas in that uh, situation. The last pairing of movements at the hip that we need to know is medial and lateral rotation. So the first one we will talk about is medial rotation. And the best sporting example here I can think about is, for you footballers, you'll understand this. If not, learn these. Trust me, they're the only good ones out there. First one is medial rotation. So the agonist here is the ellipsoas and the antagonist is the gluteus maximus. So basically, you know when you curl a free kick, that is medial rotation. You're wrapping your, the instep of your ball or your foot around the outside of the ball and you're turning your hip inwards to get that curl. That's medial rotation. And for lateral rotation, for those who aren't footballers and don't know what a Tourella is, basically you use the outside of the boot to hit on the outside of the ball and you wrap the outside of your boot around the outside of the ball and you kick it that way, twisting your hip outwards to get the spin. That is lateral rotation at the ankle. Learn that, remember that, use that. Cool, we're almost done boys and girls, I should say. Next is the knee joint. So basically, again, just flexion, extension, except now... So the flexion, the agonist, is the hamstring group and the antagonist, the quadricep group. Extension is, you know, agonist, quadricep group and antagonist is the uh, hamstring group. Both these movements fixated by the ellipsoas. But you only need to state one for each. So say you're doing, you know, let's use a sporting example as the execution phase of kicking a rugby ball conversion. The, to flex the knee, you know, all the bicep femoris, semi membranosus and semi tendinous, they all contract, but you only need to say one. And the antagonist would be, you know, the rectus femoris, vastus lateralis, vastus intermedius, and vastus medialis. State one. The two I always use, bicep femoris, rectus femoris, they sound similar, but don't get them too confused. And always use, like, a kicking motion in football or rugby as a sporting example. Moving on, our last one is the ankle joint. It isn't technically a hinge joint, but for your specification, it is a hinge joint, so go with it. Um, I know a lot of you in tape PE are interested in knowing what these things are, so you know, you know, but just go with what it says. Don't get too cocky like I always did. Write what's on the specification. Dorsi flexion. Basically, this is bringing your toes up towards your knees. The agonist is the tibialis anterior, and the antagonist are both the gastrocnemius and the soleus, fixated by the rectus femoris. Sporting example of this is a chip in football. What do you do? You bring your toes up towards your knees, you get under the ball and you lift the ball up and over the goalkeeper. Simple. The other movement is plantar flexion. So the, the agonist here, both the gastrocnemius and soleus, remember only you say one of them because you won't get credit for more than one. It's just a waste of time. An exam, you're tight for time. Don't waste your time. And the antagonist there will be the tibialis anterior. You know, fixated by the rectus femoris again. And the sporting example of this is diving. So on a 10 meter platform, when you enter the water, what do you do? You point your toes away from your ankles, simply because that increases your streamline ability, so it reduces the splash and you get maximal points. So, before I move on to the end of this video, what I want to say, revising this topic, it's very simple. On this video, go back, draw out all these tables, make the notes, yeah? When you get all those notes, 
put it into flashcards and just revise those flashcards. Trust me, it works. It may be tedious, but it's the best way to learn this. I can promise you that because I did it and I always got full marks for this. Trust me, just do it. It works. So thank you all for watching. I would like to, you know, briefly point out what we have learned today. So firstly, the name and location of joints. Secondly, the movements produced at each joint. And thirdly, the muscles involved in making those joints move. And in the next video, moving forward, is motor units. And in that video, we're going to look at what a motor unit actually is and the role of motor units in muscular contraction. So thank you everyone very much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you all in the next video.